Well, now let's hear more about some of the legal implications that you need to be aware of. Joining me now is Michael Overly and Yusuf Kaysom. Michael is a partner at Foley and Lardner LLP, and Yusuf is VP and Associate General Counsel at Charles Schwab. I'd like to welcome you both Pleasure. to the program. So obviously protecting uh, data, whether it is company data, intellectual property, uh, employee, customer information, it, it's, it's critical. But what particular compliance and regulatory aspects really need to be considered here? Michael, we'll start with you. Well, well the key, of course, is it's not just personally identifiable data. Not that that isn't very, very important to protect, but there's also other company proprietary information, intellectual property, all of that needs to be secured and protected from unauthorized access and use. So let's talk about regulation, and it's a challenge. Um, regulations vary greatly from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Even within a particular jurisdiction like the United States, we have individual states enacting their own laws and regulations. If we look at a group of state or a group of countries, the European Union, we have a collection of countries that are also developing their own approaches to privacy, even though we have sort of an overarching structure in the European Union. And so what we have is a morass of laws and regulations that are sometimes conflicting and many times confusing. Yeah. And so businesses are left with having to determine, well, maybe we have to design our security to the lowest common denominator. And that means developing approaches which go to the most strict laws and regulations of a particular jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah, and, and then you have financial services, healthcare companies. They are subject to even greater scrutiny and regulatory framework with respect to information dealing with patients, in patient information and financial information. So we have the HIPAA and the GLB that governs that and Im imposes additional restrictions. Okay. So would you say, though, there is a common thread, however, that runs through uh, data protection laws and regulations overall? Well, well that's the one good uh, sort of bright light in this is that um, many of the laws and regulations are written specifically to include language like the business has to do what is reasonable. Mm. So perfection, and that's a common misconception that it has to be perfect, and that's not the case. The business has to act reasonably. They look at things like how sensitive is this information? What are others in the industry doing? What are the technological measures that I can deploy to try and protect this information? And finally, what's the cost involved? And it's not a requirement that a company spend their entire budget on a particular security measure. They have to act reasonably. Okay. So Yusuf, what are the steps then to compliance? There's four pivotal steps. Uh, you identify the type of data you're dealing with and what laws apply to those data. Then you develop appropriate uh, policies and procedures to, to, to safeguard that data. You do a lot of employee training and you utilize uh, security systems such as Kaspersky's automated uh, security systems to enhance the compliance piece. Okay. And Michael, what are the implications if uh, you know, compliance uh, isn't there, if a company fails to do this? Well, there can be a range of things, and they can be very harsh. Uh, directors and officers can face potential personal liability. The company, of course, can have liability. There may be shareholder suits. Uh, business partners who have entrusted their data to the business may file suit. And, of course, let's not forget the fact that there may be a range of, of uh, regulators out there, governmental entities, that may all have jurisdiction and may bring actions for very hefty sanctions and fines. Mm -hmm. And in the financial services world, um, if you're a bank, you've been told by the banking regulatory agencies, if you're in the cloud and you don't do it right, we're going to hold the board, the CEO, and other executives responsible for that negligence or breach. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Michael, as IT infrastructures change and new drivers like the cloud and mobile devices and uh, social networking, this phenomenon is only going to keep growing. With bring your own devices, you name it. So what really are the key legal considerations here? Well, the concern is, you know, that kind of runs through all of this, I'm taking my very sensitive data and I'm entrusting somebody else with it. And in the case of cloud providers, I'm allowing a vendor to host that on their systems. In BYOD situations, I'm allowing an employee to use a device I might not have authorized directly. It's not my device. I don't have necessarily full control over that device. And so there are lots of concerns there. And in some instances, business have to look at the sensitivity of the data and determine is this a risk I'm willing to take? Is this something where there's a real cost benefit or not? Sometimes it's not worth proceeding. Other times there may be sufficient mitigating factors that it warrants going forward. Right. And in the way I sit, my clients tell me we want to bring, we want the BYOD program. We want to be in the cloud. 
And, and the big challenge for us is the security risk and, and the other risk associated. Uh, companies have come a long way. New offerings have come in which mitigate those risks, and it helps, but I don't, know if it's, I don't know if it's a total solution, but the reality is BYOD is here to stay. Yes, absolutely. So what about some other issues that, say, for instance, multinational uh, corporations have to deal with? Well, well, certainly that's the greatest challenge. Um, anytime data moves across borders of countries, many, many different laws and regulations may be implicated. One of the challenges with that is that many of these laws are very new. They haven't been on the books for more than a few years, in which case they've not yet been interpreted by courts, but we have clear guidance from a court, this is what you actually need to do. And so in many instances, the language of these statutes, these regulations, is not entirely clear. Businesses have to do a little guessing. And until we get greater uniformity, and clearly the European Union is trying to do that through the EU Data Protection Directive, but we're clearly not there. In fact, I have a feeling that it's going to be some time before this really shakes out and businesses have clear guidance. And, and the standards between the EU and the US systems are very different. So you may have an American account and, and a European account, right. same customer, a breach happens in one area versus the other. We don't know which rules are going to apply. Um, it's going to be, a, it's, it's difficult to f get to that point until we have uniformity. Okay. So, Michael, let's go a little deeper into specific compliance issues in regard to uh, BYOD initiatives. What really is the biggest risk that you see? Well, I, I think the biggest risk is the third party access risk. And as soon as I say that, most people think he's talking about a theft situation or a hacker or somebody else getting unauthorized access yeah. in sort of that nefarious way. That's certainly one component, very important, but the other side of this and the more likely risk is friends and family, meaning that the employee will share their device with someone with whom the company has no relationship who may have access to company data and be using it. Uh, which is one of the reasons why I think many, many um, information security vendors are rushing to try and build a wall on mobile devices between business data and personal data so that they can more accurately and thoroughly protect the business data. Mm -hmm. And not to be forgotten, the licensing issue. Um, you buy a machine for your home use, you get a home use license. Now you're using it for a commercial purpose for a different company. That company is not licensed technically to use your device. Those are issues that will be worked out. Yes. All right. Well, great, great insight from both of you. I thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you.